BGB 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's the same thing that I was doing. We just moved on. And so today we're actually not using the quarterbacks. We're just using BGB 1, 2, 3, and 4. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 11, that's it. I, if I think of anything else, I just Then he said to me, son of course, man, I gotta these talk, bones talk are the whole house of Israel. Israel. For me to they talk. say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I am going to open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the opportunity through your redemptive power to be your people and to be your servants, and no longer your servants, but your friends that you share your business with. Thank you for our place in your kingdom. Uh, thank you for our purpose that comes through you, through the death, burial, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, let this be a time of serving you, learning your truths, that we can apply to our lives as we leave this place, Lord. Let us be the light for your, for your path and for your people. And in this, I lift in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> no one has a book, and we're going to do the response to read it. I'll read the light, and you read the dark. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the Jews agreed to continue the celebration they had began doing what Mordecai, Mordecai had written to them. Well, hey, my son, my but when the plot came to the king's attention, he issued written orders that evil scene Haman had devised against the Jews to come back into his own head, and that he and his son should be impelled on post all together. Therefore, the word of the word of the word of the word of the word the word of the word the word of 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 the 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 the
actually just before we move on in our service, Sister the Queen Esther's going to come and uh, share a word of testimony. Amen. 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 First, giving out to God, I'd like to uh, thank Pastor Chris for knowing me when I was supposed to leave me to rock. <laughs> this much crack. Lord, leave me to power. Leave me to wine. But I'd just like to thank Pastor Chris for uh, just believing in me when I was smoking behind the church. And uh, when I went to the penitentiary. I got out, I stayed locked up 16 months, but I've been on my job for 19 years. Oh, my gosh.
as we know how. To give your name the praise and the glory. Now, Lord, as we shall look into your word, we pray that you would speak a word, Holy Spirit, for we need a word from you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Forgive us for our many faults and failures. We, God, ask you to challenge and inspire and encourage us through your word. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We want to continue or finish up the book of Esther. We, we, we've been for the last several weeks, and today we want to spend some time in chapters uh, 9 and 10 in our time together. We want to gain our thought from the book of Esther, chapter 9, the book of Esther, chapter 9, beginning with verse 23, beginning with verse 23, Esther, chapter 9, beginning with verse 23, amen. In Esther, chapter 9, verse 23, so the Jews agreed to continue the celebration they had begun, doing what Mordecai had written to them. For Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agathite, the enemy of the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to destroy them and had cast a pur, that is the lot, for their ruin and destruction. But when the plot came to the king's attention, he issued written orders that the evil scheme Haman had devised against the Jews should come back onto his own head, and that he and his sons should be appalled on post. This morning, as we conclude and summarize the book of the book of Esther, I think it's appropriate to challenge and help us to remember as we reflect on this story, talk from the subject, the Lord will make a way somehow. somehow. Yeah. The Lord yeah. will make a way somehow. Yeah. Say that again, the Lord will make a way somehow. Some of us remember singing the song growing up in church like a ship that's tossed and driven by and by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done to make the race so hard to run. But then I say to my soul, so take care, because the Lord will make a way somehow. The songwriter goes on, I try to do my best in service. I try to live the best I can. But it seems when I want to do the right thing, evil present on every hand. So many nights I tossed in pain, wondering what the day would bring. I say to my soul, so be patient, because the Lord will make a way somehow. And then the course says, the Lord will make a way somehow. When we need the cross, I bow. He will take away each song. Just let him have your burdens now. When the Lord bear down so heavy, the way is shown upon thy brow. There is a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. And I believe it's important for us to be reminded that the Lord is able to make a way. And although sometimes we don't know how he is gonna make a way, although we don't know how he is gonna come through for us, although we don't know how God is gonna fix it, and although we don't know how God is gonna turn it around, and although we don't know how God is going to make it better, and although we may not know how God is going to let the sun shine again, we can find comfort 
we can find comfort and encouragement by the reminder that the God that we serve, yeah. the God that we serve, yeah. is able to make a way somehow. He, he's able to, he won't let you down. He won't fail you. He will always come through for you. We have spent the last several months in the book of Esther. It has been a very difficult time for the Jews. Haman, Haman, the enemy of the Jews, has in chapter 3 devised a plot, has devised a plot where every Jew on the 13th day in the month of Adar should be killed. He has gotten King, uh, he has gotten King Xerxes to agree that every Jew, every Jew was to be killed, destroyed, annihilated, woman and child. And they were to have their plunder and all of their stuff taken away from them. This day, as we looked at chapter 3, verse 7, was taken, was chosen because he had cast a lot. He had cast a lot. A, what they call a per. A per, P-U-R, a lie. That on that day, that whatever day it landed on, every Jew would be destroyed. Word went out. That on this day, every Jew is to be wiped out. No one is to be spared. Mordecai, who was the cousin of Esther the queen, goes to her and says, we need your help. It's a very difficult time. He is crying. He's upset. In sackcloth and ashes. And through a series of events, God changes things around. So that now Mordecai is on top. Mordecai has risen to the top. So that now the Jews could be spared. The Jews could be spared. Hanging. End up getting his life taken away. Uh -huh. Losing his life on a pole that he had set up for his enemy, the enemy of the Jews, and Mordecai. Uh -huh. He ended up getting nailed to a pole. When Mordecai becomes the second in command at King Xerxes' bidding, he is unable to change what the law was. But he was able to assemble a new edict, a new law, that said in chapter 8, verse 11, which we saw last week, the king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right, every Jew now had the right to destroy, kill, annihilate the armed men of any nationality or province who might attack them and their want women. Although, although Haman's edict in many of the enemy's minds, they thought it would stand, Mordecai, now being in second in control, has a new edict, which says, we're not going to do to you what you are planning to do to us. But let it be clear, Hello. if you mess with us, if you mess with us, then we will not take it lying down. We're going to fight. And we mean we're going to fight. So the law went out. Better leave Jews alone. Hands off the Jews. Don't bother the Jews. I know you can't stand them. I know you don't like them. But you better not bother them. Hands off the Jews. But on the 13th day, chapter 9, verse 1, the day that it had originally been scheduled in chapter, 13, chapter 3, verse 13, for the Jews to lose their life. In the 13th, the 12th month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was carried out. The king that was 
the, the law, the edict that was commanded by the, by the enemies was carried out. And on this day, on this day, it had been hoped that the enemies of the Jews could overpower them. What? The enemies of the Jews had hoped that on this day, we would be able to remove every Jew. The enemies of the Jews hoped on this day. We would be able to kill, to destroy, to annihilate every Jew, man, woman, and child. The enemies of the Jews had already in their mind concluded that on this day, we would be able to destroy every, every Jew out there. And not only to destroy them, but to take all of their stuff. But now, notice what the text says. But now, the tables were turned. And the Jews got the upper hand. Because the Lord made a way somehow. The Jews, the Jews were on the, the upper hand. The Jews said, no, don't bother me. The Jews said, don't, don't, don't you dare try it. Don't you dare try it. I know you don't like me. I know you don't want to be bothered with me. I know that you have prejudice and, and disdain for me. I know you, you don't want me around your town, but, but don't you dare. Jews assembled in the cities and in their provinces of Xerxes and, and notice and notice to, to attack those who had were determined to destroy them. We we, we mean business. And even though they tried, even though they tried. Because let me tell you something, even though the, the law says don't mess with them, even though the law says that, that, that they have a right to be where they are, even though the law says that, that, that churches will not tolerate any prejudice, any, any desire to destroy the people, there were some people who just couldn't let it go. There were some people that were determined to hang on to their prejudice and their bigotry. There were some people that was determined that in spite of what the law said, I don't like them folk. I don't like them. I don't like them folk. I don't like what side of the track they live on. I don't like what they do. I don't like what they wear. And I want them gone. So no matter what Mordecai says, I'm not following what Mordecai says. I'm following the law of the good old boy. I wish I had a witness here. I don't care what the law says. I, I like to follow the laws of the good old boys. I, I like to follow the laws of the good old boys. And, and we're determined that we're going to take them out. We're determined that we're going to destroy them. We're determined that we're going to annihilate them. We're determined that we're going to kill their kids. We're determined that we're going to take out their women. We're determined that we're going to kill them. That we're going to take their houses. Yeah. Yeah. Notice what the text says. Text says, no one, no one, no one to stand up against them. It's where they got out by Mordecai through Xerxes. And, and notice they had other folk on their side, the nobles, the provinces, the satraps, the governors, the kings, administrators. Notice they were there to help. Oh, the Jews, because Mordecai, because fear, Mordecai had. Seize them. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mordecai was prominent here in that palace. His reputation was known throughout the province, and, and, and he was very powerful. What he says. Yes, but some people going to try you. Anyhow. They tried it. They came at him on that day. Oh yeah, the enemy of the Jews came at him on that day. The enemies of the Jews came at him on that day. And in verse five, the Jews struck that. The Jews struck down all. The Jews struck down all. The Jews struck down all. The Jews struck down all the enemies with the sword, killing and destroying them. And, and notice, and, and did whatever they wanted to. To those who hated them. And in the citadel of Susa. Notice the Jews.
Jews killed and destroyed 500. 500 men. They lost their life because they couldn't let their prejudice go. They lost their life because they couldn't let their hatred go. They lost their life because in spite of what the law says, we want them gone. 500 men and including in that 500 Verse 10 says, the 10 sons of Haman. It's 10 boys. Here's 10 boys. Do you remember who Haman was? Chapter 5, verse 11. Haman was a wealthy man. Haman was a self centered man. Haman had it going on. Chapter 5, verse 11. It says, Haman would go around boasting to those about his wealth, his sons, and all the ways the king had haunted him. And how he had been was a self-centered son of a gun. I'm not going to call him a truck that car. He was self self-centered. Oh yes, oh yes. It was all about hey. He had ten sons. I'm not going to go through all these names, but let me give you a little history on them. Few of them. One son name was Parshendatha, which means curious self. Curious self, which means he was the kind that would like to dig in other folks' business. Yes, yes, he liked to pry and other folks. Son, Delphon, and, and, and he was a weeping self. Which means he liked to go around and make many people feel self pity. But it was still about self. Said a son, Parapha, which means generous self. He liked to spend everything that he had on him. Oh, yes, oh yes, oh yes. He had a son, Arsana, which means bold. Seth, dare you try me? He had a son, Ardera, which means dignified. Seth, which means he had pride. Yes, yes, he had a last son mentioned was by Safa, which means pure self. Uh -huh. I'm better than everybody else. They were just like their dad. Because after all that happened, don't fall too far from the tree. They, they were just like their daddy. They were just like their daddy. It was all about themselves. They were just like their daddy. They had the big head. They were just like their daddy. They were stuck on themselves. They were just like their daddy. They, they felt like they were better than everybody else. They thought it was just like their daddy. And as a result of being just like their daddy, as a result of being just like their daddy, they got what that daddy got. Yes, yes, 500 of them lost their Lies. The number was reported to the king, got back to the king. 500 killed them killed themselves. They lost their lives. Capital of the citadel of Susa. What should be done in the rest of the 126 provinces? What else should we do? He goes to the queen. What else should we do now that you've taken out that 500? The pleases of the king, verse 13, Esther said to him, yeah, the Jews in Susa permission to carry this out tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, we not only, we've already killed them, but we want to hang them on, on a pole and let them know, don't you try this. Yeah. Don't, don't you dare try this. Yeah. 
king gave the command and the rest of Susa. And in verse 15, the Jews of Susa came together on the 14th day in the month of Adar. And, and notice they put the, gap, the, put the death in, in Susa 300 men. 300 men lost, additional men lost their lives, and they didn't touch their plunder. They didn't touch themselves as they did before when, when they took out the 500, because I want you to know, this is not about me religion myself. This is not about me lying in my pocket. This is not about me trying to increase my bank account. This is about me standing for righteousness. This is about me standing for justice. Oh, yeah, it ain't about the money. It's about doing right by folk. It, 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 yes, yes, it ain't about the money. And, and can you imagine if we had some leaders that would stand up and say, it, it ain't about me trying to line my pocket. It's about me standing up for the righteous and fair and doing the right by other folk. Got a hundred dollars, got to 26. Providence is what's going to happen there. But you over notice, meanwhile, the remainder of the Jews who were in the king's provinces. Also, we're there. We're going to be here to protect ourselves. Don't you bother us. So you know what they did? They tried it. They tried it. Oh, oh yeah, they. They tried it. And you know what? They killed 75,000 of them. And yes, and, and I don't want your stuff. I don't want your stuff. They did not lay their hands on, the, on, the, on their plunder. Did this happen on the 13th day in the month of Adar? Sometimes in your life that God wasn't there, that God didn't. 
didn't show up, that God didn't make a way for you, that God didn't bring you out. But every now and then you ought to sit back down and count your blessings and name them one by one. Every now and then you ought to write how God opened a door for you, how God healed your body, how God came through for you. And you ought to never forget, you ought to never forget that God is a good God. Yes, yes, yes. What a God says every now and every once a year. You ought to have a flashback. Remember where God brought you from. You ought to have a flashback. Remember how God has been a good God. You ought to have a flashback. Remember where you had enemies on every hand. God made a way for you. But that city was no way. Yes, yes, yes. You write it down. Don't you ever forget. You count your blessings. Don't you ever forget. You, you don't get divine amnesia and divine dimension. You will not ever forget that God has been a mighty good God. What has God done for you? What has God done for you? Yes, what has God done for you? He says, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you what God did for you. Verse 22, God gave us relief from our enemies. Oh yes, oh yes, they wanted to destroy, but God showed up for us. Now, not only did God give us relief from our enemies, then notice what the text says. But God turned our sorrow, God turned our sorrow into joy. God turned our mourning into celebration. Yes, it was a hard situation, yes, it was a difficult situation, yes. We done had some dog like, yes, we done cried sometimes, but let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you what God did. God done right now tears away. Let me tell you what God did. Before we was walking around with our head hung down, but now we able to walk around with our head up high. Let me tell you what God did. We had enemies on every hand, but let me tell you, God fought out battle for us. God showed up and God showed out. And don't you ever forget how good God has been. Yes, yes, and out of celebration. Out of appreciation for what God has done. Yes, yes, you ought to celebrate with feasting. Notice we celebrate with joy. Yes, you give presents of food to one another. Therefore, you not only that, you, but I want you, he says, but I'm going to tell you another part. You need to learn how to give gifts to those who can't give nothing back to. Oh, yes, oh, yes, and I tell you, when you got an appreciation for what God has done for you, when you got an appreciation what God has done for you, when you got an appreciation what God has done for you, you want to do something for somebody else who can't do it for you back. Because see, you recognize that if God had not been on my side, if God had not won my battle, if God had not come through for me, if God had not made a way for me, if God had not opened doors for me, if God had not been my bridge or a trouble water, if God had not walked with me while I walked through the valley of the shadow of death,
And when that plot yeah. came to the king's attention, yeah, he wrote another law so that the evil schemes that Haman had devised would be taken back, that they would come down on his own head, and, and his son should be imposed on him. I, I'm so glad that when the king got involved, oh yes, oh yes, when the king got involved, the king was able to make it all right. Yes, I'm so glad that when the king got involved, yes, 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 the king showed up and the king showed out. Yes, yes, and some of y'all might be thinking he's just talking about Xerxes, but no, I got me another king. One that sits high and looks on that all power in his hands, who's already determined, don't mess with my child, don't mess with my children. I got my hands on my child, and I want you to know that I'm a king that sits high, and I look low, and I got all Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. So the Jews, verse 27, took it upon themselves to establish a establish a custom that on those days they would remember. They and their descendants would remember. They and their descendants would remember how good God had been to them. Oh yes, oh yes, right on that day. They had originally been destruction. They would remember. Oh yes, I should have been dead. Uh, but if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would have been dead. I tell you, God showed up in my situation. God turned that thing around for me. God says, I can't pay you for all you've done for me. God says, I can't pay you for all that you've done for me. God says, I can't pay you for all you've done for me. God says I can't pay you for all that you've done for me. You know what I'm going to do, God? I'm going to preach. I'm going to adore you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you the honor. Oh yes, and these days should be remembered for generations to come. Yes, 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 they should be remembered. For generations to come. God has been on our side. God has made a way for us. Yes, yes, the days of Param, P-U-R-I-M, many days now. Two days, God has been so good to us. Yes, 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 we should never fail. Notice what the text says, the latter part of verse 28. We should never fail. We should never fail to celebrate. Yes, yes, nor should the memory of what God done for us ever die from our descendants. Yes, and I submit to us the reason why we got an ungrateful society. Because somebody won't remind their children. God has been a mighty good God. The reason why we got so much ungratefulness in our society. Because somebody don't remember when I was hungry, God put food on our table. The reason why we got so much ungratefulness in our society. Because some of us don't remember why we were in trouble. It was nobody but God that put a roof over our head. Some of us need to have a flashback to remember when we didn't have clothes and we had holes in our shoes. It was nobody but God that made it so that we could wear jobs on our feet. God has been a good God, and God never shall I forget. Never shall I forget. Never shall I forget. That's why Joshua said, as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord because God has brought us too far. God has been too good. God has watched over us too many times, and we can't forget how good God has been. It's time for us to go home. But let me go ahead and close up the book of Esther. You know how it goes, don't you? Oh, yeah, it started out more than Was in a bad situation. Uh, early on in the book of Esther, uh, we reminded that Mordecai walked around in sackcloth and ashes. Don't you remember early on in the book of Mordecai? He had a death sentence 
Jesus on his head. Oh yeah, you remember early on in the book of Esther. Yeah, Mordecai uh, was uh, on, yeah, on his bed and uh, in a, with tears flowing down his face. But notice how the book of Esther ends. Mordecai chapter 10 verse 3. But you was now second, yeah, in rank to Xerxes. And not only was he second in rank, but he was preeminent among the Jews. He was held in high esteem by many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of the people and spoke up for the welfare of the Jews. You know how the book of Esther ends. Yeah, it ends with Mordecai on top. It ends with Mordecai, yeah, in glory. It ends with Mordecai in a position of power and prestige. And I believe as Mordecai was here today, Mordecai, they say, let me tell you, I ain't got the big head. Mordecai would say, no, I can't be bragging about my situation. Let me tell you, baby, you may see my story. You may see my glory. You may see where God has brought me from. You might see me in a position of prominence and power now. But baby, although you see my glory, let me tell you something, I still remember my story. Yeah, my story was I had tears coming down. My story was I was in sackcloth and ashes. My story is I had trouble in my way. And I had to cry sometimes. My story is I had to come through the hills and the mountains. My story is, yeah, I'd have been down and I'd have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. My story is I had enemies on every hand. Is there anybody here? But let me tell you what my God has done. It was nobody but you, Lord, that brought me a mighty long way. It was nobody but you, Lord. When I was down, you picked me up. It was nobody but you, Lord. When I was crying, you wiped every tear from my eyes. It was nobody but you, Lord. When I was in sackcloth and ashes, you now put me in a royal diadem. It was nobody but you, Lord. When I had ashes on my head, you changed it to a crown of gold. And I don't know about you. Other folks don't know how I got here. Other don't know that I got to this place of prominence and power. Other folks may wonder. Get to this place from being on the bottom to being raised to the top. Don't play out there wonder how did you move from being the victim to the victor? But let me tell you how I got here. Let me tell you my testimony. My testimony is the Lord will, the Lord will, the Lord will make a way somehow. I had somebody here that could say, I know where I've been. But look at me now. I know where I've been. But look at me now. Is there anybody here that can show no testify? I know where I've been. And I've been to the bar. I know where I've been. I had to cry sometimes. I know where I've been. I had my back against the wall. Oh, no. 
He's standing with arms beckoning. He's standing calling. Come unto me, all as we can have laid And I will give you rest. Perhaps you're here today and you don't know this Jesus. You don't know this Lord we're talking about. You, you don't know this joy that we have in our hearts. You don't know it because you're out of relationship and fellowship with the Lord. God will make a way for you. He wants to. He wants to give you a new life. He wants to make you whole and make you new. All you have to do is receive his son Jesus into your life. You can begin now asking him, Lord, forgive me my sins. Forgive me my wrongdoings. Come into my life. Come into my life. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And that's, if that's you here today, we're standing here at the altar. He's standing with arms wide open, ready to receive you, to receive unto yourself. Now is your moment to make that decision for Christ. Because he wants to make a way for you in your life. Amen. Let's all stand and sing. This altar is open. As we continue to worship the Lord, this altar is open. The Lord is calling those that need to make a decision for him. That needs to come to know him in a real and special way. If you're here today, let the Lord come into your life. Now is the moment. Now is the time. Don't, don't put it off. This is a sacred moment. A sacred time. Give this moment to these that are making decisions. Give it to the Lord. Let there be no walking unless you're coming to give your life to the Lord. He's standing with arms wide open because he loves you. He cares for you. He wants to forgive you of all your sins, your wrongdoings. He wants to give you a new life. If you want to let him, let him come in and come in today. Who will be next? Who will make him? Lord today. Let this be your day of Adar. Let this be your day of celebration. Because you turn from sin and turn to the Lord. And say, Lord, here I am. Take me, you see. Won't you come? See what the struggle. Alright. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, your Lord.
Oh, oh, oh. 